Hey boys and girls, today is January 5th and this is Larry, UBRailroad.com. Check me out. Today I am building a small building. Now regardless of the size of the building, all techniques apply to regardless. Now what I'm building this building out of is just a bunch of scraps. Okay, these right here are louvers that I dumpster dived that came out of a door. I cut them in half, see, cut them in half, and now I'm using these because these work perfect for like a flat siding. If you take a look at what I've done so far, I've done two sides, and you see the cracks. Now, when I'm all done, I will take a piece and I will put it in here like this, and I will fill those cracks, and then that will be very prototypical of that time frame. Now something I want to tell you about when you're building a building. Try to maintain everything in specific dimensions. Like all your trim board, you want to cut it a quarter inch. Your roofs are either 30 or 45 or whatever you want. But just make sure that you stay away from odd sizes like 33 and an eighth or something like that. Because that's going to get you in trouble. So anyway, with that being said, I've got two sides going here. Now, I'm using all scrap wood because this is just junk scrap wood. Okay, you see what I did? I just got different scrap pieces in here supporting the walls. And I got two walls together, and I'm going to continue, and I'm going to go on. Now, this is just going to have one window and a door in the front. Now, here's the door. This door is... Uh, a sample that came out of Menards. I'll show you in the next video what it is. But this will be the door. It's going to be left open. It's going to have a little dinger on the top of it. And uh, I'm going to have a light in it, of course. But uh, let me get going with this, and I'll show you more as we get going. Okay, you can see what I've got here so far. i got the four sides glued together. You can see I'm just using scraps to stabilize the corners and the sides and everything. You know, it's not like the building is going to be moved anywhere, so you don't need to get real heavy with it. Like I said, just use scraps. I use 99% of all my projects are cedar. And I cut them, I got, you know, three saws that I could cut them, you know, down to little thin slivers if I need to. But anyway, uh, don't be afraid to make buildings like this because th they're not a big deal. Now, I've got a couple mistakes here already. Here's one right here, and then right here. You see how this one is on the inside? This one's on the outside. Guess what? Nobody's going to see that. So don't be afraid to make a mistake. If you do, figure a way to cover it up. Like I said, all of my corners are going to have trim board on it. And that goes for up here too. So by the time I put a trim board up there, you're not going to see this. So that's what makes it so nice about building, you know, little projects like this out of wood. You don't have to be 100%. Uh, now, if I was building brick, a brick building, that's totally different. Because it, it, I'll tell you what, I've never built a brick building, but I don't plan on it. But anyway, I wanted to show you the door, okay? Here's my door. Now, here's what I get at Menards. On the front of it, it looks like a little door, and on the back of it, it's louvered. So you could use a two-fold. I cut this tip off, and then what I do to make my... It's not quite wide enough. It's only like an inch and a... Uh, maybe an inch and an eighth. So then I put two pieces of wood on the side of it, and it makes it look like it's part of the door then. And then I put, you know, my little door handle on it and all that, but this door is going to sit like this anyway. So it's not like anybody's going to be able to tell you know exactly what you did there so don't be afraid but anyway I'll uh, I'll be getting back to you okay the next thing I want to show you is if you decide to put glass in there see this this is just a package of something I got I save all my packages that have enough plastic in it to make a window uh, I like mine a little stiffer. You could actually use a baggie if you get it tight enough. Uh, otherwise, it shows wrinkles. It doesn't look right. Okay. Another thing I wanted to tell you: when you build, when I build buildings, this this thing is the go-to tool. 
I could do all kinds of stuff with this. The only, these only cost 14, 15 bucks. So they're not real expensive and they do a great job. They got markings on it so you can be precise. I use it all the time for everything. Now, this will not cut these. I, I don't know what this is, but th these are louvers, like I said. And I don't know what it is, but every time I cut one, it smells like real stinky perfume from probably the house it was in or something. But uh, anyway, okay, next thing after I put the window in, then I'm going to probably just take thin cardboard, make my roof. I haven't decided if I'm going to go shingles or if I'm going to go with regular roof tar paper. I don't know yet. I haven't, decided, I haven't got that far yet. I'll uh, figure that out when I get there. So uh, that's it for right now. Okay, I've got the house all, or the building, not house, building, all trimmed out now. As you can see, I put the window in. Whoops, it's popping out. Got to re-glue it. But you can see that I've got all of this done. Now, I want to show you some things. Anybody could do this. Because you see, this thing is full of mistakes. And if you become a professional mistake cover-upper, you're a better builder than most, okay? This right here, I didn't quite get to cover what I told you I was, but that's okay, because when I paint it, you won't see this, okay? Now, I'm putting a cardboard bottom for the bo uh, bottom, cardboard box for the bottom. This way I could, you know, set it where I need to go without any interference with the scenery and stuff. Another thing I'm doing is I'm building a little canopy over the door and I'm painting it in the color that you find appropriate for that time so it's going to be a green and a yellow and then the window I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it but then here's the roof I just took a piece of cardboard I put it on there haven't decided if I'm going to use wood shingles or asphalt shingles or just tar paper I'm still thinking on that but, uh, oh, a, a, an update I wanted to bring to you on this door here. Remember I was telling you about the door? These are samples, and I get them at Menards, and I don't know what they're a sample of. Maybe some kind of a door or something, but, but it's over in, like, the, the carpet area. Uh, you just got to look around because it got samples of all kinds of stuff all over the place, and, and they, they come in handy. I mean, you can see how I got the door painted, you know. Uh, give you an idea but anyway okay that's where I'm at right now so I'll be getting back to you okay I'm back and now I am working on the roof rafters they're very simple uh, I cheat okay I cheat but here's what I've done so far because I want this roof to come off I put these rafters in such a position that the roof slides on and off but yet if you look at it sideways it looks like this is the way it would be then I take scraps and I cut them like this and then I will be inserting them like this okay this is cheating okay and I do it like this all the way down both sides and then my roof would be pretty much done except how I'm gonna shingle it now if you want your building to be detailed on the inside, this technique is not the one to use. You want to naturally run all of your rafters all the way up on both sides like this so that, you know, it looks, well, you wouldn't have all these scrap pieces in there anyway. But this is, like I said, just a, a, a little, uh, little building, no, uh, not a lot of great detail in it, but anyway. I'll be back. Okay, I'm back. Now I've got all of my uh, roof supports in. You can kind of see how it looks. There's that side. Here's this side. Now the nice thing about doing this, this way, is that when you take the roof off, if you ever have to replace the light or something, it just comes right off and all of those stay in place. Now, you can glue these on your roof, but if you do that, make sure you got your roof on and in place so that it's not going to go nowhere. Then once you do that, 
then you could glue them all on there. Now you can see on this side, this is the side that will be viewed the most because it will be coming this way. You can see that those are all pretty straight, okay? On this side here, there's, there's one or two that might be a little out of whack, but you know what? When the roof settles down, nobody in the world's going to see that, okay? So I just wanted to show you that's the, the, the roof part now. Now I got to work on the front. I think uh, because I got this little cardboard and I'm going to put a little piece of uh, uh, like a, I don't know what you call it, uh, goes in there, whatever you call it. Okay, now let me get going and uh, I'll get back to you then. Okay, I'm back. Uh, as you can see, I'm painting this now and when I get all done, You'll understand the colors that I'm putting on and I'm going to kind of surprise you and show you what this is. But I made a canopy and the way I made the canopy is I just took a tube and here's my first one. I didn't like the line in it. And I just cut a quarter section out of it and then cut two pieces of real thin uh, wood and followed it, cut it in my bandsaw real easy okay now you can kind of see that uh, with this bright light on it you could see some mistakes here you know like I got a little blue here I'll, I'll dab that up with white if I can but you see this glue on here and stuff you know nobody's gonna see that okay now if this was up front you know I would do a much much nicer job but because it's gonna be so far away people can't see that Okay, now, another thing that I did is I took my white cardboard top and I painted it, gave it a, a, a coat of brown. This way when I put my shingles on there, if I happen to miss a spot, it won't show white. It'll show, you know, brown. So that's why I did that. So this is where I'm at with this right now. Uh, I got to paint the canopy and do some more detailing and uh, then I'll, I'll, I'll get back to you. Okay, I'm back. I decided I'm going to use wooden shingles. Now, here's what I use for wooden shingles. Shingles. You could buy these, but I dumpster dive and there's a lot of new construction and a lot of them have wood shingles on them. So I go by and I pick them up and then I cut the very tips off of them so that they're all about the same thickness. And then they're already this thin. So you could take these and, you know, kind of break them up like this, you know, to give it, you know, a little character to it and stuff. Then what I do is I draw my lines. First one is exactly this one. So I'm using uh, for glue, uh, I find it best if I use a silicone, a black silicone, because you can't see it. So then I'll put a bead here. And now I got time to work with it. It doesn't set up. I can move these if they get twisted or what have you, you know. So I've got this all ready to go. And then now I already did one side. So here, here's what one side's going to look like when it's all done like this. Okay, now you can see, see I already touched this and I messed it up a little bit. So I got to straighten these back up a little bit but see that uh, silicone gives you the opportunity to do that so anyway let me get going and then I'll uh, get back to you okay boys and girls this is it I'm all done now this is a cigar place okay Cuba has the same colors in their flag as the United States do red white and blue and the way it is is it looks just like this it's five stripes three blue two white and then this red triangle with the white star in it so I tried to give it the Cuba colors and now that I'm looking at it I'm not sure if this is gonna fit with the color schemes of everything else I do but anyway I wanted to show this to you and there will be a light in there now you see those little squares in there? I got a whole bunch of little cigars I'm going to put in there. 
And there's his table where he makes his hand-rolled cigars. There'll be a chair and a guy in there, and of course, there'll be a light. But anyway, I wanted to show you. So you see, anybody could do something like this. This is not hard at all. And as far as the shingles go, is what I did is I used my black water, which is just black dirt and water, and I painted the whole shingles. Then I came back with walnut stain, and I highlighted underneath it because most of the shingles around here are darkened like that from the rainfall. So that's kind of what I did. You look at your neighborhood, see what it looks like, and then just, you know, try and copy it. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. I know it was a long video, but if you like this, please leave a like. If you want to subscribe, please subscribe. And I always, always love comments. Well, I hope you enjoyed this. If you got any questions, you know how to get in touch with me. This is Larry, over and out.